Good evening, everyone. Just make sure that's not too loud. If it's too loud, you all let me know, okay? <laughs> Just trying to get some little music in the background, trying to do something different, trying to be able to share a new experience with you all. I believe we're here. If that's too loud, you all let me know. How's everybody doing this evening? It's Sunday, it's six o'clock, and we're here at the Lord's table. Right? All right, well, I'm not gonna delay because I don't, you know, I don't wanna keep you all, I don't wanna be here all night either. <laughs> I wanna be able to enjoy my, my Sunday evening as well. I pray that you all have had a good week and um, that your weekend was beautiful and that you were able to get out and enjoy the weather and do some things that you like to do, whatever that may be, right? Whatever that may be. I'm just trying just to get all my systems straight here. Looks like I'm missing something. Oh, no, there it is. I think I got it. I think I'm good. All right, you all. Well, here we are again. Like I said a moment ago, we're at the Lord's table uh, where we're going to sit down and we have another opportunity to uh, hear what it is that the Lord's saying, feast on his word, feast on his truths, feast on his understanding for our lives, right? That's what our goal is. I'm going to turn this music down because it may not be distracting you all, but it's distracting me a little bit. So let me turn that down just a bit, just a tad bit if I can. All right, that may be a little bit better, for me at least. Um, all right, so you all know who I am. I'm Sandra Wise, and today I, I really just want to chat with you all um, and just set aside a couple of minutes to be able to uh, talk about putting aside our purpose really just putting aside our purpose and focusing in on what our duty, what our duty is. Quick prayer. Gracious and eternal Father, Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have created so many, so many eons ago. Lord, we desire to be able to live the abundant life that you promised to us. And we're gonna do it by being able to have a better understanding as we sit at your table. In Jesus' name. Amen. So focusing, really just putting aside, right? Putting aside the idea of purpose and really picking up, really picking up what our duty, what our duty is. Ecclesiastes 12, chapter 12, verses 13 through 14. Um, it reads, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. It says, fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole I want to say the entire the whole and entire duty of man for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing whether it be good or whether evil you know after sitting for a few days um, with God and just talking and just and just being quiet and then also sitting with my brother pastor, that's what I like to call him, he's my brother pastor. Um, I have come to the conclusion, you all, that finding my purpose, right, and how uh, these plans that I wanna make for me, right, I've come to the understanding that that's pretty exhausting. <laughs> it's exhausting. 
at least for me, I don't know about for you, but it's really exhausting. And I think if you were honest that you would make the same assess, that you would say the same thing, you would make the same assessment. So I did a little research, just a little bit, not much. Did a little bit of research to find out what God says about this understanding of purpose. Cause you know, I mean, there's all this stuff about purpose, purpose driven life, purpose driven this purpose, 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 purpose. I've talked about this even in churches, preached about purpose. So I did a little bit of research um, about this word and, and understanding about, you know, how I'm to find my purpose and, and how I'm supposed to know it, right? And I wanna tell you, nothing, nothing. I could not find not a thing in scripture. Nothing. I mean, there are many in there, but nothing very straightforward. There's a lot of things in the Bible that infer, right, maybe what our purpose should be, but nothing as straightforward as Ecclesiastes 12, 13, and 14 that tells us, that tells me, that tells you that our duty is to fear God. That's our duty, is to fear God and keep his commands. That's what it says. For this is the whole, the entire duty of man. And let me tell you all, once that kind of really just really stuck with me and just kind of just anchor, I anchored myself in that scripture, I want to tell you guys right now, I don't know about you all, but I'm talking about I felt like a weight, like a burden was lifted off of me. I really did. I felt like there was this, I felt almost like I was floating, like there was such a heaviness removed. And I know, you know, I didn't, I no longer felt the need to do. I no longer felt the need to perform or to be accepted by man's standards, right? I no longer can be judged by what I do, right? Or, or what I say, right? Cause I finally got it, my duty, as a woman, as a believer, is to fear God and to keep his commandments. Just that simple. Just that simple. That is my duty. That's it. What more should be required of a believer, of a Christian? I mean, we have such short lives that we're living, you all. Those of you who are in your 20s, before you know it, you're gonna be staring down the end of your 30s, the end of your 40s, the end of your 50s, and you're gonna be like, what happened to my life? Where'd it go? And we spend so much time trying to figure out what this purpose is. Listen, the Bible says, this is what the Bible says in Proverbs 19, 21. It says, many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Many are the plans in your heart, many are the plans in my heart, but it is going to be the Lord's purpose. The Lord's purpose, the Lord has a purpose. It is going to be the Lord's purpose that prevails. It is so easy for us to make plans that have nothing, and I mean not a thing, to do with the Lord's purpose. We do it all the time. I, and, and I'm not talking about vacation and things like that because we should enjoy ourselves and we should make plans so we can have something to do and be able to enjoy ourselves with our family. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about this purpose in our lives, right? So I have done it many times. If I, I'm gonna raise my hand and I'm going to be honest. I've done it many, many times. I've searched, I've sought out, I've even had the desire in my heart, Lord, show me my purpose. What am I supposed to be doing here? Help me to find the reason why I am still here. Help me, God, show me. I want to be able to do this. I wanna be able to fulfill the purpose that why I'm here. And I'm telling you, just a short conversation with my brother pastor, and he reminded me what Ecclesiastes said, that the duty the duty of man is to fear God and to keep his commandments. Just that simple. It's just that simple. We run around trying to make an impact, always wanting just to, you know, have something to do. But here's the question I have for us. Is fearing God and keeping his commandments not the greatest impact that a believer can make? 
Is that not the greatest impact that we can make to fear God? If I fear God, will you not be the beneficiary of that? If I keep his commandments, will you not be the beneficiary of that? Yes, you will. Yes, you will. Every place I go, everyone I have uh, uh, contact with, everyone, everyone, I can make a great impact by fearing God and keeping his commandments. I don't have to come up with this grandiose purpose, this grandiose idea of what it is that I'm supposed to be doing so that everybody can see me and, and, and see the greatness that I have and, and, and see how profound and how deep and, or how whatever I can be. Now, if that's my gift, that's different, right? But to set out and to, and, and, and to squander so much time so much time just to try and figure out what God is telling us to do. Just fear me, reverence me, take care of me, right? And keep my commandments. I mean, we can get so, so busy that we miss it. I did, I did. And I pray that I don't again. Cause I got it now. I got it. The light has come on. And listen, it has nothing to do with titles and all of that. Cause truth of the matter is, you know, God told me, he called me. He said, Sandra, this is what I want, but you still have a duty and your duty to me. I'm not talking about your gift, Sandra, but your duty to me is to fear me and to keep my commandments. And I now believe that that is my true purpose. I now believe that that is my true purpose. Listen, I wanna say something to you all and I, and, I, and I really want you to hear what I'm saying. Our minds, our minds, our intellect, right? It is connected, it is connected, it is grounded in this world. We have been programmed since birth or since we were in three or four years old. We've been programmed to believe, especially when we get into school, that what we do or what we say will manifest our purpose. Y'all remember when y'all were little and the teacher told you or asked you a question and said, hey, little so-and-so or hey, little so-and-so, you know, what is it that you wanna be when you grow up? Start casting images. Start putting things out there into the world so that you can work towards being that. And then what happens is that, let's just say that for some reason we obtain that, we're, we're able to attain those things. And now we believe that that becomes our duty, that becomes our purpose in life. And we may miss fearing the Lord and keeping his commandments because we've been programmed to believe that we have to do something and is not doing that enough. Cause I'm gonna tell you right now, that's hard work. You don't believe it? Test yourselves, examine your own behavior and then put it to the test. See if you can be around people who frustrate you. Because see, if you keep his commandments, people don't frustrate you. They don't, I don't care what you say. When you have the love of God and the joy of the Lord with you, people cannot frustrate you. They can't. It's impossible. Because God doesn't give his joy, he doesn't give his love to be frustrated. That's when we're operating in our own strength, in our own purpose, in our own beliefs, right? We've been programmed, you all, to believe that what we do or what we say is gonna manifest some purpose for us. And if we don't feel like we've gotten it or maybe we're just jumping from here to here or there to there, we just feel like we're lost and we're running in circles where we can just settle ourselves, just settle ourselves and just live the life that we raised our hands and said that we wanted to do. Fear the Lord and keep his commandments. That's enough right there, right? <laughs> I'm telling you, if you don't believe me, test yourself, test your own behavior, put it to the test. 
the next time tomorrow something traffic grocery store lines walmart people whatever it is people on your job your customers your clients somebody not showing up somebody who don't have their money whatever the situation is i'm telling you test it and see i promise you you'll see that it is not as easy as we think living out these commandments because if we really understand what Ecclesiastes is saying, one of the most critical, critical parts of living out this life, this life as a believer, is being able to fear God and live out those commandments. And if we're true with ourselves, which I hope you will be, you'll say to yourself, you know, I'm not doing so well in that area of my life. I'm not, I'm not really keeping his commandments. I'm not really entering the joy of the Lord. I'm not really allowing God's love, his peace. I really am failing in my ability to be able to um, have self-control and to love my neighbors as I love myself, to love someone else's children as I love my own, right? When, when someone goes to hurt your son or daughter, you get really upset. I've gotten upset. We get really, really bothered by that because those are our children. And we don't want anybody to hurt our children the same way God doesn't want anyone to hurt us. But not to be frustrated, not to be angry, not to lose your cool or lose your self-control, right? But to love, put love first, lead with love. It's just as simple as that, but it's not that easy. It really isn't. And let me say this, when it comes to these commandments, <laughs> y'all, when it comes to these commandments, there are far more, far more than the 10 laid out for Moses. There are, you know, like, sort of like the silent ones. I was talking to my pastor, brother, brother pastor. <laughs> I was talking to him, I think it was yesterday, and, and we were talking about um, something, I, I don't know, but. It doesn't matter what we're talking about. It's, it's always going to end up being about God eventually. And he reminded me of the scripture, Matthew 9, 10 through 13. And I'm going to read it for you. It says, and as Jesus reclined at the table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came in and were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. I mean, let's just stop right there. I mean, what the Bible, what Matthew's saying is that, you know, they were real comfortable in there to be reclining, you know, leaning back and having a comfort level, you know, with Jesus and Jesus with, you know, as the Bible says, these sinners. You know, they were very, there was a spirit of familiarity. There was, there was something that allowed them to be comfortable, you know. The Bible doesn't say that they were leaning forward, they were sat up and ready to learn and came in there with, you know, you know, ears perked up and all that. No, it says that they were reclining. That's what the Bible says. And then it goes on to say, and when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, <laughs> why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he, when Jesus heard it, he said, those who are well, right? Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. And this is the part that I absolutely loved. And he said to them, go and learn what this means. Go and learn what this means. And what is he saying? When you go and you learn, then you too can come and sit and recline with the tax collectors and with the sinners. Let me say this, our greatness lies in our ability to be like Jesus, not to be behind pulpits, not to be on big stages with lights in our faces and, and having crowds. No, it's to be in someone's home, comfortable in someone's home, a guest in someone's home. And then others can come in and to be able to sit and recline and you share. That's what Jesus did. No lights, you know, no pamphlets, 
no no programs no none of that no interest fees you know where you know you got to pay your fee to get in none of that none of that and i'm not saying there's anything wrong with it i'm just saying that the duty of man is to fear god because that's what jesus did and to keep his commandments and that's what jesus did and why would that not be your duty why would that not be my duty why are we so caught up in trying to produce something according to the world? Our mind is fixed on the world when our mind should be fixed on heaven. It should be fixed on spiritual things. That's where we need to. We need to ground ourselves and center ourselves and become one with ourselves. I was sharing with my brother pastor yesterday that I was listening to someone um, it, I can't remember his name and I, and I wish I could but please this is not mine but I, I think his name was Allen or something I, I can't remember but he had this great saying and he said that if in fact he had a cup of water and I wish I had one with me well I guess I could use this one inside this cup right and inside this cup um, the cup was actually uh, who he was it, it represented the body and inside this cup was water and it was filled up to here right or like right here and inside that what the water represents is the spirit of God right that's the spirit of God your body is the cup the water is the spirit of God and then he said and what happens if you pour some oil over in there well it's not gonna mix because oil and water doesn't mix right and he said that there's several ways that people can try and get it out that they'll maybe try and get a spoon and try and take the oil out or maybe they'll get a sponge and they'll try and take the water out but he said if, if you just continue to pour some water Eventually what happens is that the water will rise and then the oil will spill out. Now the moral to that story is that our bodies, we should be occupying our bodies 100% with the Spirit of God so that nothing can get in there. Nothing. Nothing. And that is the duty of us. When, just like Jesus, he was 100% the Spirit of God. Yet he walked this earth, just like you and I, flesh and blood, just like you and I. And it's easy for us to be able to have reverence for someone who we think we can't be like, but Jesus said that we can be like him. He said, you too, you too, that means you and I, we also, we are co-laborers with him. And the only way that we can fulfill this duty is to get our mind set off of trying to find our purpose in this physical world. Live out the duty. Fear God, live out the commandments. And then I promise you, I promise you that whatever your purpose is, whatever reason God has you here and continues to allow you to stay here, if that's what we want to believe, right? It will manifest for you. It will. One thing I believe, and I believe this wholeheartedly, that the universe in and of itself, which was created by the creator, is the one thing that is obedient to its creator. And the universe is here to be a servant to us. It gives to us. It gives us oxygen, it gives us nourishment, it gives us everything we need to sustain ourselves. Why would it not give you your purpose? But you have to believe that, and you have to unhook your, your mind from the material world. Listen, the mind is a beautiful thing, but it's a tool. It is a tool, and it should not drive your decisions, right? It's supposed to work the decisions that the Spirit has given you. That's what it's supposed to do. The mind is supposed to be su submitted to the Spirit, but we have it backwards. The mind drives our decisions when it's supposed to work work the decisions that the Spirit has given us. Right? All right, you guys. The Lord's table. You decide. Are you going to continue to allow your mind to drive you into and have you exhausted looking for your purpose? Or will you come over to the Spirit side and find a way? Research. 
engross yourself in whatever you have to. Go off the edge, do whatever you have to do to find out how you are supposed to live according to the spirit. Ground yourself. Silence the noise. Make that your purpose this week. Silence the noise. Remove the clutter. Tell the children, listen, I need an hour. Turn off your phones. Turn off your televisions. Turn off the distractions. Seek the Lord while he may be found. And ask him, Lord, show me how I can ground myself. Do that. Unplug. You've had 20, 30, 40, 50, some of you 60, 70 years, almost 80 years of being plugged into this world. It's time to unplug and allow the spirit to fill up your entire body so that you can live out your duty. Amen? All right, you all. Quick prayer, and we're going to get out of here. Gracious and eternal Father, God, you're awesome in all your ways and in all your knowledge. Thank you, Father, for the light that you shine. And God, we see it as bright as day, even though it's six o'clock at night. Thank you, Father, for the abundant life that you've promised us. Thank you for this table, God, that you've given to be able to bring us, Father, the word that you would have us to know. So, Father, we don't have to be confused trying to search for things, God, that you're making very plain. Remove the scales from our eyes. Allow us to be able to see the truth. And Father, when we have difficulty, let us raise our hands and, and find someone who can be a guide, a mentor to help us get there. Because Lord, we want the abundant life that you promised us. And we thank you, Father, again. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. All right, you all. Have a beautiful week. You know that I love you, but the Lord loves you best. Ecclesiastes, right? Make sure you put that somewhere, 12, 13, and 14, Ecclesiastes 12, 13, and 14. The duty of man, your duty, my duty, is to fear God and to live out his commandments. I love you guys. I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.